and so we're staying in County Cork for our next story. Now many of us are familiar with the heritage villages of Bunratty Castle and Muckras Park where life in rural Ireland from over a hundred years ago has been recreated. Now there's a chance to experience farming from the 1950s onwards at the farm near Grana in North Cork. As well as living history to evoke memories for older people, the farm has plenty to offer children with play areas and an interactive milking parlour. Recently I travelled to Grenade to meet the people behind the farm and to see the old ways in action. Nostalgia comes in many forms. But who would expect these rectangular bales of hay to trigger memories of times past? To anyone who grew up on a farm in the last 50 years, they were a familiar sight, as indeed were this 1960s Massey Ferguson baler and hay bob. The small bales are part of our recent history, but the traditional haycock harks back to more ancient farm practices. Here, both methods being showcased on the farm at Grana in North Cork. This tradition of, of, of haycock making would have died out by now and even making small square bales is, is dying out as we speak. But uh, here people can see the two methods that were used uh, again, 50s and 60s and 70s. And it shows of, of, of how we became more mechanised. We were uh, making the sugan, which was used for tying down the haycocks. And um, we would have turned the hay with the pike and uh, made up the cocks of hay when I was young, but we wouldn't have been allowed to go near the, the sugan because that was classed as a job for the experts. On the land from the 1950s onwards, mechanisation brought great advances to farming. In the home, electricity did the same for the farmer's wife, removing much of the drudgery of life. With electrification came immense change to the social life of the countryside, and these changes are reflected here at the farm. We're depicting here the, um, the change that took place between 1954 and 1964. Uh -huh. uh, again with the introduction of uh, rural electrification. So at that time the water would have been held in the barrel off the roof. Uh, the washing would have been done in a wash tub. The meat would have been kept in a meat safe. Mm -hmm. Outdoor uh, fridge. Keep the, uh, yes, right, outdoor fridge. This uh, farmhouse very typical of rural Ireland uh, many years ago and of course an open fire. That's right, the open fire with the, the old skillet pot and uh, the bellus. And uh, the bellus wasn't used in every county in Ireland. Uh, they didn't use them down in Kerry due to the fact that the turf was easier to light but in most other counties they did have to use the bellus. And of course every Irish Catholic household had a sacred heart. That's right, yeah. And they also had the child of Prague as well and uh, the typical lamp for giving the light. So they would either have this lamp or the tilly lamp hanging from the ceiling. OK, well, let's go now and find out what light actually did to rural Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> this would be the transition that took place over the 10 year period. This kitchen is a mirror kitchen of the other one. And we see the changes that electrification has brought, notably the light, among others. Of course, yeah, the light and also people installed the cookers. This is a Stanley number no. nine. It was bought new on the 16th of April 1963 in County Leitrim and it's still in very good condition today. And what else would have been a notable change? The, the television would have been the, the big change, I suppose, to social life because uh, when people got the television, everybody, neighbours wouldn't have had so a lot of people came in and visiting to just watch the television. Of course, we had only black and white programmes. We had radio television and uh, the next day everybody was speaking about the same program so this television was in my aunt's house and uh, as I said it was very unusual to have a television at the time and the old people at the time used to think that uh, that the news presenters and that were watching them so some people used to dress up and sit down to watch the television. But if you're a child and not too bothered about the past there are farm animals to meet and handle. That and much more including an interactive milking parlour. But don't worry, these cows don't kick out. They're made from fibreglass and they have an endless supply of milk. Harry Ferguson was the man that designed this tractor and he was born in 1884 in County Down in Northern Ireland. The exhibition also comprises a huge collection of tractors, combine harvesters and farm machinery. 
testament to Mick Ford, who just over a year ago realised his ambition to set up an open farm. I've always loved the farming and uh, when our kids were young we used to go to England and Wales visiting open farms and I said one day I'd like to do that because I, I felt it was a, a great way of demonstrating how a farm, real farm works. My, my wife and my daughter are very much involved in, in, in the business here as well as my son-in-law and my son Evan helps out as well from time to time. With the passing seasons the farm is continually changing. Indeed, it's a lovely place in which to learn about our rural heritage. And reminder that the farm will be having a harvest festival on Sunday the 15th of September. It's a great day out for the family with lots on offer. And Grana, for your information, is located not far from the main Cork to Mallow Road. After the break, we'll be sampling the thrills of water paddling in County Sligo. Stay with us.